Mickey Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCS Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. I'm returning to Clinton, Paris, and Tampa's my community. I grew up here, went to school here, and my wife and I make our home here. What makes Tampa special are its people. So when I represent someone injured in my community, it's personal. Call my office and speak to a real lawyer and not some referral service. I will fight the insurance companies to get the settlement that you deserve. At the law office of Clinton Paris, we take the pain out of being hurt. holidays merry merry christmas to you all brian fulford here live in the bcsn jericho broadcast network studios in atlanta georgia ad drew from his home office in southern georgia south georgia drew how you doing this afternoon i'm doing all right my brother how about you man i'm good see i tried to respect your privacy i didn't tell all the people where you where you live and everything i you know i almost slipped and did it <laughs> I know if you want to keep your business and your home location, you know, personal. So I said in South Georgia is where you can find Drew bumping around the, the counties of South Georgia. There you go. There you go. There you go. Um, I'm so, just north of Tallahassee. We'll just put it like that. Oh, see, there you go. You giving giving away giving away the business. I'm just sitting here sending out the uh, retweet uh, from my own personal. Uh, Twitter account. Of course, you can follow me at DRB365. Drew, you can find him at BCSN Drew, where he is. Uh, good to be on. Good to see Tamara T jumping in. That's what happens when you are connected with us on our Instagram. Ah, well, hold on. On our YouTube, Facebook, and of course, Chuck Hunt checking in, of course, on Facebook. And then, of course, today, Drew. We're actually streaming on Instagram. So there might be some people watching us on IG because that's a new feature that we have now. And if you're watching us on X, formerly known as Twitter, you can actually send us comments. We'll see those. So all kinds of new and exciting ways to connect with, uh, with, the, uh, with the fan base, Drew. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, whatever we can do to improve this media and get this story out better, that's what we're going to try to do. All right, so on today's show, hold on, I'm fin finishing this last tweet, tweet here. Uh, even on my day off, I'm here to talk. Uh, let's go. Hold on, I'm sorry. You, you're catching me live, live in, uh, live, in tweet live form tweeting. here. Live tweeting live at the same tweet. time. That's why, you know, just something new. Okay, so before we get going, let me, okay, so let me set the show. We're, gonna, we're here for a good time, not a long time, all right? You know what that means. That means we're going to give you a quick, short, abridged version of the show. Roy's laughing. He's laughing when I said that. Um, I, I want to be out of here in a decent time today. No three hours show today, folks. Sorry. I can hear everyone in the background going, oh, man, no Drew and Brian for three hours. No, not today. Um, coming up very shortly, real quick, uh, Olivia Antilla is going to be joining us. Live for Hoops is her name and uh if you are not following her on x you are missing out 
And if you haven't caught any of her podcast on YouTube, Live for Hoops, that's L-I-V or F-O-R, Hoops, you're missing out. I mean, look, a, a former basketball player at Florida a and uh, you've heard her on the ONG Strike Zone many times, if those of you who check us out. But she's also, you know, she's been doing Twitter spaces. Um, I, I love, I love the work she's doing. And, and for you and me, Drew, as basketball heads, I mean, it, it, it's good seeing somebody else in this basketball space, especially someone uh, like, like Liv, you know, I mean, not just, just, a, uh, of course she's a, a, a woman, but I mean, you know, you know, Liv, Liv be, she be throwing some pictures up on Twitter that, you know, be getting folks in trouble. They be, I'm sure. Not me, but they be getting folks in trouble. So, you know, it's, it's, it's real cool having Liv out there. Uh, but you'll get a chance to uh, see her, talk to her. We'll talk to her about the uh, basketball season, Drew, uh, coming up here. Well, um, the football season is officially over, Drew. Are you sad? <laughs> I, there's those two. Yes, yes. Yeah, the, the, the season – the season is over. Um, you know, and uh, what what is what is the what is the storyline? What what's the thing you will remember about this season? Um, let me give you three of them. Oh, wow, let's wow, see. Three, okay. Yeah. Number one, uh, and in no particular order, uh, fam you. Fam, you, uh, Willie finally getting it done. That has to be the storyline, getting over the Jackson State hurdle and getting to the Celebration Bowl and winning it. So that has to be one storyline. Uh, Benedict would have to be another storyline, another perfect season for the Tigers of Benedict. That has to be storyline number two. And hmm, if I had to go with number three, the ch- Hello and welcome. We are live here in Jacksonville, Florida in the Adam Jenkins Community Sports and Music Complex at the home of the Edward Waters University Tigers. And we've got some great basketball action ready for you tonight on the Black College Sports Network. I am Mondre Allen, your play-by-play for the afternoon here with David Jones for our color commentary. And David, we've got the Edward Waters Tigers, the home Tigers here lined up against the Maroon Tigers of Morehouse College. Made the drive about five hours from Morehouse to come to sunny Jacksonville, Florida for this matchup. David, tell us a little bit about about these two teams we're gonna see tonight. Uh, These two teams tonight, another action-packed night with with the Battle of the Tigers, you might say. Morehouse is nine and one, Edward Waters at six and four. Edward Waters really needs this victory right now. Morehouse is through at at the top of the uh, SIAC East. Uh, both teams shoot pretty well. Uh, Morehouse shooting at 40% from two-point range. Edward Waters at 42%. Uh, three-point range. Uh, both of them are pretty much even, right around 30%. Rebounding. Uh, we basically have, we basically have uh, at, basically 70% for uh, Edward Waters and 66% for uh, 
for for Edward, uh, for Morehouse. So we're looking at this as a really close contest. Uh, led by the point guard play of Damian Mitchell for Morehouse, who's averaging, who's averaging nine point two assists the game for Morehouse, which is very impressive. We have um, we have RJ Nord and we have um, we have RJ Nord and Elias Mitchell that lead Edward Waters for points per game from Edward Waters. Elias averaging. 16.7 points per game. Impressive. RJ Gore coming in at 9 points per game. We have uh, we have Cedric Taylor at 10.7 and Keyshawn Texas at 12.1 for Morehouse. The action at night. Both teams are pretty much keeping in blocks and turnovers. We got side versus speed tonight as we get ready for our starting lineups. Our starting lineups are going to be brought to you by Niche Network, where your uniqueness is your niche. Sign up for your free account at nichenetwork.tv. As we get ready for both teams to get into their starting lineup, we'll announce the starters for the Morehouse Maroon Tigers first. They'll be in their visiting uniforms, black tops, black bottoms, trimmed in that famous maroon for the Tigers as we get ready to announce. Let's get to our starters on the Morehouse side. On the Morehouse side, we have Damian Mitchell starting at the point guard. We have Cedric Taylor uh, that will be starting at the wing. We have Demetrius Allen that will be starting as well on the wing. The big fella, the Luke Wolfar, will be starting at center. And uh, I, I can't be Keyshawn Hickson as well. I don't think that we could mention Morehouse Tiger basketball without talking about Grady Brewer. Grady Brewer, former head coach of the Morehouse Tigers. We lost Grady Brewer about two years ago and rocked the basketball world all around. Grady Brewer is such a connected individual when it comes to college basketball, but especially to the Atlanta area and what he meant to the Morehouse Tigers. I don't think that there should be a game played without Grady Brewer mentioned, so we'll give him a quick moment of silence as we listen to our national anthem as well. Dave, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back and we'll go to everyone. National anthem has been completed and we've announced the starting lineup for the Morehouse Tigers. Now, we'll get to the starting lineup for our home team. It'll be Edward Waters University lining up white tops, white bottoms, trim in orange and purple. Those numbers in purple and those beautiful white jerseys. David, let's go over our niche network starting lineups for Edward Waters. Our starting lineup for Edward Waters is R.J. George, Elias Mitchell, Amari uh, Floyd, Jeremiah Monte, and Chris As we talk about both of these teams, it'll be size versus speed. Pretty clear indicator of size versus speed in this matchup. The Edward Waters Tigers will look to get up and down. They'll try to run, run, run. Rebound and run for the Tigers versus the Morehouse Tigers. We'll see them mix up their defense, some man, some zone. They do a great job adding in some full court pressure as well. They'll use that lift and athleticism and size on the inside to dominate the glass and get a lot of deflections as well defensively. What are you expecting to see from Morehouse today? Up and 
written down. So what ends up happening, Morehouse doesn't like it in the 90s or 100s. They want it in that 70 range. And when they get in that 70 range and they get it down the big fella, that's when they're most effective. We'll see Edward Waters try to counter those in, that inside presence with their side, with their quickness and speed. Uh, the Edward Waters, we know, have started out a little slow this season, but caught on quickly and are now sitting fourth in the SIAC East. Rattled off five games in a row did Morehouse and just uh, did Edward Waters and had their win streak snapped just on Saturday night by Clark Atlanta, snapping that win streak with a one-point loss to the Clark Atlanta Panthers. They'll come in here and try to get back in that winning groove as Edward Waters has had a pretty tough slate schedule here. They got Clark Atlanta, who's now third in the SIAC. Now uh, Morehouse, who's number one, not only in the SIAC East, but Morehouse has the best record overall in the SIAC. They'll get Savannah State next Saturday, Benedict College on Monday the 29th, and then in... And then on January the 31st, they'll get Allen University. So a tough slate to end the month of January for Edward Waters. But they have found ways to win, especially once they got into conference play. We've got Coach Huff in his first season with Edward Waters. And they have won more games, more conference games this season so far at the midway point than they did all of last year. What do you want to say about this coaching staff at Edward Waters University? They're going to flat out get after you. We mentioned that they want to run, but they'll do it in a very aggressive, pressing, attacking style. They want to turn you over. They want to run you as much as they possibly can. We'll get ready for the tip-off here between these two teams. We're talking about two of the best in the SIAC East, and the East has been by far the toughest division in the SIAC by in this 2024, 2023-2024 season. Absolutely. And basically, so many words when we look at this, I expect another high-flying game between both teams. Here we go. The tip will go to Edward Waters. And it's Jeremiah Quartang with the basketball. He'll get it over to Christian Ford. They'll run some offense. Goliath Mitchell, corner three. Can't get that one to drop. Rebound going to the Maroon Tigers, and they'll set the table here. Gray with the basketball, looking for Mitchell. Mitchell, back door, gets it in the middle of the paint. Kicks it back out. Now they'll drop the ball, get a layup there. As Gray, Jaden Gray, Gets the first bucket of this basketball game for Morehouse. A little switch of philosophy for Morehouse. They got they put Jaden Gray at the point guard and moving Damian Mitchell over to the shooting guard. Damian Mitchell traditionally is the point guard for Morehouse. We'll see. It'll be moves and counter moves Absolutely. in this basketball game. Now we talked about Grady Brewer, former coach of uh, the Morehouse College Maroon Tigers. Now currently at the helm for Morehouse is Coach Douglas Whitler, longtime assistant of Grady Brewer and former player at Morehouse, as Quartain can't get that three to go. Rebound and another push. Gray with the basketball. Gets it to Mitchell. Mitchell attacking back to Gray. Now they'll swing it around. Ball at the top. They'll look for post entry. They get it inside to the for He has it stripped away. New Orford got away with a foul right there. No call. Yes, he did. Kicked it to the corner. R.J. Nor with it. Leans in. Couldn't get the layup to go. Now we'll get... I could not see the official. I believe we've got a foul call. That will go number 25. Let's see. Amon Decker. Decker, an important piece for the Tigers. Decker's the, averaging 9.8 points per game for Morehouse as Nord gets the first free throw to go. 
Edward Waters been pretty solid from the free throw line. They shot it well against Clark in that very close game. Shot it well from the line. Nord gets both free throws to go, and the Tigers answer the early bucket, and we're tied 2-2 early in the first half. And there's that Tiger press all over, and, and they get a turnover on the run. Cortain, three on one. Cortain gets it to Nord. Oh, Nord inside blocked, blocked away. No war for a race to RJ Nord layup. And the Tigers come on a press on off, off of a it. miss. Miss, it is still. Another turnover, Ford. Cortan, three, stepped into it, could not get it to go. And they're going to press again off a of miss. You can see Coach Huff's out what he wants. Amari Floyd with a reach in, no call. Mitchell, layup, no good. And we and got a block. Christian Ford will get called for the block. David, we always say styles make fights. <laughs> And listen, Coach Huff's philosophy, he's letting it be known now. Miss or make, he's going to have pressure on you the whole time. We've talked about Coach Huff's style a lot off, off camera, but I want to talk a little bit about it during this basketball game. In the history of college basketball, we've seen this style of play work for many coaches. Oh, yeah. If you remember, Nolan Richardson at Arkansas made it work for the Razorbacks. UNLV. UNLV also with the Amoeba Press made it work. And one of my personal hometown favorites, Rick Patino with the Louisville Cardinals, won a 2013 national championship with the same pressing style for the Cardinals. Amari Floyd with the basketball up top. We'll see how Edward Waters is able to make this style effective. Oh, tough move. Could have been an and one right there for Christian Ford, but He'll take the bucket, and the first official field goal for the Tigers will go to four. Four fouls, oh, no score. Almost and they'll get. Steal. Now, here's an interesting point in the game. This is the second foul on Christian Ford. So we'll see. Christian Ford got hit with the block, and now the reach in there. That's two. So we'll see if he comes out. Now, I'm waiting to see. Is that two? No, they only have Christian Ford with one. So they have R.J. Nord with one and Christian Ford with one. Because R.J. Nord took the, uh, he took, they called him on the block. Got a whistle here. Amari Flory trying to do battle with New Warfare down low. Tough one right there. And Amari Flory picks up his first foul. Floyd looking like, hey, man, what do you expect from me? <laughs> this guy's 260. They're going to double. They'll get it in bounds here. Looking to drive it. Goliath Mitchell almost picked up a foul. New oh, oh, inside, block. locked away by Floyd. Floyd battling. Christian Ford gets it. Now they're going to run. R.J. Nord has it. He'll pitch back to Cortez. Excellent D. Go ball screen there with Floyd. Floyd wide open. He can shoot it. Floyd can shoot it. Three ball no good. Could not get it to go. The Tigers are getting open shots, but just can't get the three to go. We still got a tie basketball game. 4-4 four, four with 16.50 remaining on the game clock. No good. Tipped around. The World 4 had a hand on it, but couldn't come down with it. RJ Noah with the basketball on the run. Gets it to Christian Ford. And they'll call up for an offensive wow. foul. I, I, yeah, I, uh, it's questionable. But guess who it is? We've seen him before. Edward Waters is going to get right back into that press, Madre. On the run, DJ Mitchell, cross court pass, lob into North for he's got it in a layup. The Warford gets his first bucket. The big fella. We'll see if he can keep up with this pace. So far, he's been able to. And, and travel. I give Vino Glover with the official step. Vino Glover found his way to Edward Waters and so good for them. Was running track last season. Yes, he was. 
Huff finding complimentary pieces from everywhere as he's getting the job at Everett Waters. Cross court pass. Mitchell's going to take a three. Mitchell off the side of the rim. No good. Ford. And Mitchell, oh, Mitchell takes it out of the air. Oh, but it's stolen away by Amari Floyd. Oh, they, they called a. Uh, That's all the wall for. His first. Picks up the foul. They got him on the reach. Now we'll have a timeout. We'll get a timeout on the floor. We got a timeout on the floor. 6-4 is our score with 16 minutes left to play. We'll go to a quick break, and we'll be right back. Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU Athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do. Brian, AD, Roy, all you guys at BCSN, we really appreciate what it is that you guys, you guys do for us. Here at Everett Waters University, we've got heated basketball action in the SIAC East. We've got the Morehouse Maroon Tigers versus the Edward Waters Tigers. Edward Waters coming out of the timeout will take the basket, take the ball out underneath their own basket. David, what have we seen in the first four minutes of this game? Uh, we, we see pretty much what was predicted. Edward Waters coming out with that pressure, and they've been effective so far. And Morehouse going down low. And they want to get it down to the big fella. And it's still. Lots of deflections in this basketball game. Offensive foul. Charge. We'll get an offensive foul. Sammy Vassat comes into the game with a lot of energy. Not something you normally see. International players aren't normally defenders. Vassat comes in with a lot of energy. Morehouse able to break the press that time. Quick three. That one looked good, but didn't go in. Hit the back of the rim. Tough rebound. Morehouse just getting it in on the yeah. offensive glass as Nate Lancewell gets the bucket right there. Everett Waters quickly trying to attack. Cortain with the basketball. DJ Mitchell all over him. Swing over to the side. Gets it to Christian Ford. Four, three, lined up, but no good. Just can't get the three-point shot to fall for the Tigers thus far. Got it inside. Lancewell with the basketball. He had DJ Mitchell in the middle, but takes it himself. That left-hand layup, no good. Ford with the rebound. Tigers are running. They get it to Amari Floyd. Floyd, Glover. Glover can shoot it. Passed it up. Gets it inside to Ford. Ford, scoop layup, no good. Christian Ford thought he was fouled. Officials will say no. It'll stay with Edward Waters, though. Now into the game. This is an important substitution. Deshaun Edwards. Edwards has been coming playing into well the, the late. Vino Glover does take that one and knocks it down. Like fine wine, Vino Glover tickles the twine and gets the three. We'll see if that ignites any offense. Bodies hitting the floor. Christian Ford gets it to Deshaun Edwards. Edwards, that was a clear wow. foul. I thought he was going to swallow the whistle again <laughs> for Deshaun Edwards. <laughs> Calls the foul there. Listen, I don't want to pick on the officials too much, David. The, the, the SIAC is just a physical league, especially in the East. It is a physical black and blue basketball league, and the officials call the game that way. And, and, you know, we talked about that on Saturday. You know, we, we compared it to the AFC North. You have to be battle-tested coming through that SIAC East. You're not going to get... Every bump, every slap, every reach in is just not going to get called in this league. We'd be here for four hours if that was the case. <laughs> They're going to let you play, and that's how they call the game. 
So Edwards will get his second free throw. We got a tie basketball game. This could be the first lead of the game for Edward Waters, and they yeah. get it. Edwards had a tremendous game versus Clark Atlanta. Edward Waters night. back in that press again. They're going to try to spread the floor a little bit. Does Morehouse to try to attack it a little bit differently, but still a lot of pressure. Uh, it's hit away. Another steal. Vino Glover on the run. They got a two on one. Glover, left hand layup. Can't get it to go. Tipped around. The sock kicks to the corner. Glover passed up the three. Now takes it. They are yelling at Glover to take the three. And Sammy Vasai is the energizer buddy for Edward Waters. And it'll be a jump ball. It'll be Morehouse Tiger basketball. I mean, both teams going at it. If you play in this basketball game tonight, you're going to need ice packs in the morning. <laughs> Edward Waters right back into that press. I mean, this is the black and blue division for a reason. We've got a 9-8 score. Edward Waters with a one-point lead. Three minutes and 49 seconds remaining. Morehouse deals with the pressure that time. They get it inside and a oh. dunk right there. Nate Lacewell. Lacewell gets the jam. And now it's Morehouse College with a one point lead. And now they steal. get a steal. Morehouse on the run. Some contact, no call. That was an excellent fend off for him to get that layup. Demetrius Caleb. And they get another steal. Still. Turnover. Caleb. Oh, the block. Oh. That official was way behind oh, that play. Yeah, he was he was out of position. And that was not his call. Yeah, he had an official yeah, on the was, baseline. Yeah, he had an official on the on the baseline. And he called it from the wrong. Cabrillo Huff is living right living. now at that yes. call. It, it, it's <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that's the one clean block that we got. You <laughs> called that one. 12-9 <laughs> our score. We got a three-point lead now. Four-point lead after Leo! the free throw. Leo! By Leo! Kashawn Pugh. Now for more, the Morehouse uh, Tigers, Maroon Tigers, it's Demetrius Caleb. Former star of Last chance you yes, on the was. floor for the Tigers. Love those uniforms for Morehouse. Just says the oh, house on fire. Shot. Cortang with a nice shot. Three-point game, 11 to 14 is our score. We yeah, got another turnover. Three on two. Got it inside. Edwards fires away. Yeah. Sean Edwards with four quick points. Oh. And, <laughs> I don't know what a foul is in this game anymore. <laughs> I really don't. Goliath Mitchell, three. And they call a foul on the three. Wow. Who did, uh, did they call the foul yeah, on? That foul goes against Adonis Tolbert. We got a one-point basketball game, 14 to 13. This game, now, it, it's hard for me to tell who has the advantage because <laughs> you would think Edward Waters wanted to turn this into a track meet, but Morehouse has played well at this pace. They've got a one-point lead in this basketball game. How about this? It seems as both teams are imposing their will. Now, we've got some discussion here at the table. I'm not sure if it's a clock issue or if it's a foul count issue, but they're trying to explain something to Coach Cabral Huff. Okay, now we'll get back to the free throw, and it'll be, it'll be Jaden Gray at the free throw line. No good. Free throw, no good. A fast, physical game we have going on here. Goliath Mitchell with the basketball. 
They were looking inside to Tolbert. Cortan takes it. Left hand layup, no good. Fight for the rebound. Pushing it out. They're going to continue with this pace. Tough crossover and Jaden Gray. Beautiful move right there. That drop cross into, into the pull-up. 11 minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the first half. That cross is what freed him up to get that shot off. They got it inside to Tolbert, and Tolbert is fouled. Deshaun Edwards and Adonis Tolbert. Important pieces tonight off the bench. 16 to 13 is our score. We've got 11 minutes and 40 seconds remaining. We'll go to a quick break. We'll be right back. The Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. What up, y'all? It's Gary Gray. Check it out. I need you to do something for me. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for Urban Nerd Con. It's going to be lit. Okay. Our heroes, our villains, everyone's con. See y'all there. Visit theurbannerdcon. We are back here at Edward Waters University. They inbound underneath their own basket. Christian Ford, a quick jump shot. Got it to go. His second bucket of the half by Ford. That pressure from Morehouse continues. Cross court pass. Dangerous throw. But they get it in and get it dunked nice. right there. They geese. Amari Floyd with the three. Can't get that one to go. They'll need some scoring for Amari Floyd. Didn't get much from him in the Clark Atlanta game. Dribble pull up right there. No good. Back. Now, here's what I've seen so far, David. I want you to tell me what you think. We've seen Nuorfor, the seven-footer, being taken off the floor. Do you think that's because of pace? or do you think Absolutely, it's the pace. Now, you would think that that may be an advantage for Edward Waters, but Morehouse has played well without him on the floor. That three, no good. Rebound and run. Pull up three-pointer there, no good. Good box out. Elias Mitchell on the point for the Tigers. Looks like he's going to go for his. Got it inside. Christian oh, Ford in. Christian Ford. Christian Ford with the dipsy do layup and kisses it off the glass for two. We've got a one point game. 18 to 17. Now there's New Orford back into the game. Appropriate time. There's a rebound that needs to be secured. New Orford back into the game at the 10 minute mark. We've got 10 minutes and 27 seconds remaining. 18 to 17. Now listen, folks, you may not think that we're playing with a shot clock, but I guarantee you there's a shot clock in the gym. It just hasn't been necessary for this basketball game. These two teams are not even letting the clock get down to 20 before a shot goes up. <laughs> but also, as you say, in this game of chess with the coaches, Noir 4 is going to come in and out because of the pace of this game. They, gonna, they want him to be fresh in the second half. They don't want him to be ran down after the first half. We'll get this shot from Christian Ford. And he gets that to go. Back 
to the press again. And a steal. Cortain gets the three. It's Got good. the three to go. Cortain knocks the three down. Oh. Blocked away by Adonis Tolbert. Adonis Tolbert with the block off the lob. Tigers just one for eight from three, but that was a big one. I'm sorry, Tigers are two for nine from three as Morehouse shoots another three. That one off the side of the rim. Mitchell takes the three. Mitchell can't get the three to go. Tolbert had his hand on it, but it'll go back to Mitchell. Mitchell cross-court pass. Got away with a travel right there. We'll get a foul call on Amari Floyd. Go to the line. Demetrius came up to second. Former star of Last Chance U. Going to the line there. Both teams shooting well from the free throw line. Morehouse four or five. Make that five of six. And Edward Waters is perfect from the line. Five from five. Uh, and you jinxed them. Goliath Mitchell with the basketball, runs him into Tobert. Corner three coming up. That one no good. Kicks the rebound inside, but it's blocked away. We'll get a foul call. That foul. Omar Rowe. Rowe has started a couple of games for the Morehouse Tigers, but primarily has been a prominent rotation player yes. for the Tigers. Cortain will go to the line up two. 21-19 our score. Edward Waters misses their first free throw. Difference in this game has been the three-point line so far. Edward Waters hasn't made many, but they've made a couple enough to put him in the lead. They are two and another five. turnover. Edward Waters with this press causing a number of turnovers. Madre, as we said in pregame, that was going to be the key for Edward Waters in this game to turn them over. You are absolutely right. Edward Waters wants to live off of it. They'll inbound to Tolbert. Tolbert will move it around. They'll get it to Cortang. Mitchell, three ball. Can't get that one to go. And that'll be two for 11 for Edward Waters. They're going to stick to their style. And they're going to shoot them. Pull up three right there. That one looked good again, but could not get it to go. Tipped around. And a block. Oh, wow. Boy, as physical as this game is, some of the right, touch right, calls. Right, 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 right. Wow. I, I said it earlier in the basketball game. I'm not sure what a foul is. I'm not sure <laughs> that I can say that I know what that is. But you talk about the turnovers. Points off turnovers, almost identical for both teams. You got nine points off turnovers for Edward Waters and eight points off the turnovers from Morehouse. Now, Morehouse so far, according to our official stats, has nine turnovers, and Edward Waters has five. Misses both. Nine turnovers in the first portion, our first half of the first half. <laughs> I don't think you can get 20 turnovers in the first half and win the basketball game, but we'll see. Got it inside. Edwards has been effective. Shot Edwards will go to nine. the spin. Gets it to Glover. Glover kick out. Mitchell, three. And Mitchell Foul is fouled. Foul on the three. Uh, putting your hands behind your back won't take away the contact. The young fella's going to get hit with a foul. 
Keys gets hit with that one. First shot is good. Now that is Mitchell's first point of the basketball game. Comes at the free throw line. Second free throw up is good. The Tigers continue shooting it well from the strike. He'll get one more free throw, Will Mitchell. Makes Rattles it in. And the pressure just keeps coming for Edward Waters. Pull up jump shot. That one no good. Oh, got a rebound. Oh, he's got a travel. The Warfo thought he got fouled, but that was a clear <laughs> travel. Now, David, to me, it looks like the pressure starting to get to Morehouse a little bit. Any yeah. thoughts from you on that one? Speeding them up. You know, Morehouse prefers to get it over half court, take their time, and get into their set. Edward Waters will not allow that. This has to be a credit to the conditioning of this Edward Waters basketball team that can play at this oh, pace, and they're pass. still shooting. 90% from the free throw line is Edward Waters. As opposed to just 55% for Morehouse yeah. from the free throw line. Edward Waters sticking with the pressure. Speeding Morehouse up. Got it inside. Oh. And we'll get a foul call. The Warford tried to tried to put send it home. It's blocked, some, but they call a foul. Got some spirited conversation at the free throw line between Nawarfa and Ahmad Decker. 25-19, and Nawarfa gets that one to go. Big fella has a great touch from the line. And the Maroon Tigers are going to need every free throw. We mentioned not shooting it well from the line so far, but Nawarfa gets them both. A seven footer is your best free throw shooter. That could be good and bad, actually. Absolutely could. Beautiful crossover by Cortang. Cortang tried to skip it to Mitchell. Oh, Stepped out of bounds. It's a dangerous pass by Cortang. And guess what happens? Here comes the Edward Waters pressure again. And it looks like we'll get a media timeout here by the officials. So we'll have a timeout on the floor. 25 to 21 on score. 25 21. Aaron Waters leading by four at the seven minute and 50 second mark. We'll be right back after this. When it comes to professional learning, teachers deserve better. From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center, an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. Here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working. <laughs> never not working. Never ever not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield, never not working. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University sports, the Southwest. We are back here at Arrow Waters. We'll get a quick inbound. This game has moved so fast, David, that I haven't been able to tell the audience that Coach Cabral Huff, who's the coach of Everett Waters, actually graduated from Morehouse and played for the late, great Grady Brewer at yes, Morehouse. So we've got a couple of Morehouse men in the building during this basketball game, which are Doug Whitmer, Doug Whitmer, the head coach of Morehouse College, but also Cabral Huff is a Morehouse grad. Ruth, 
as you would say, HBCU crowd. Also, a lot of passion in this basketball game. Guys want to win this game for a oh, lot of reasons. For a number of reasons. Deshaun Edwards oh, slips in there. They called a foul. Ah, you hate it. It was down to two. It was good help defense if he just could have got out the way just a little bit. And that now, puts them in the bonus. For the first time in the basketball game, we're going to see Solomon Campbell get into the game. 6'10", Solomon Campbell is going to get his first minutes as the Warfare can't get that one to go. And the free throw line woes continue for the Maroon Tigers. As the Warfare can't get that free throw to go. Both free throws are a miss. And the Tigers just can't get free throws to go. Oh, and it's still. Just all over him there was Demetrius Caleb. It was all over Cortez. Caleb to the line, drew some contact. It was a wild shot by Very Caleb. wild shot. But he got the foul. And it's Campbell that just got into the game that picks up the foul. Foul starting to, starting to rack up on the Edward uh, Water side. That's 11. Morehouse still missing, though. Can't capitalize. Morehouse at the line. As Caleb gets that one to go. Looks like Morehouse making some changes to their defense here. Looks they're like going to show some zone. zone. Yeah. Ford gets it to Cortain. Cortain kicks it to the corner to Glover. They'll skip it across. Mitchell has it. Got it inside. Campbell could not get it to go. Nice little jump hook from Solomon Campbell, but couldn't get it to go. Three-point basketball game here. We've got 6.15 on the game clock. And it just ran him over right oh, there. The <laughs> he just ran him over as Decker, I mean, just steamrolls Cortez. Right here. So, 25 to 22. We've got 6.10 remaining on the game clock. David, what's your overall thoughts on the basketball game so far? You know what? Both teams are sticking to their guns on what they want to do. Now, Morehouse did make a change and go to zone, so we'll see how Edward Waters handles that. But, boy, Edward Waters has caused multiple turn turnovers off of this press. They keep, they're keep keeping that tempo up and fast, and they want to they want to make Morehouse run with them. So we'll see this 1-3-1 pressure from Morehouse, and we'll see if how many problems that causes for Edward Waters. On the drive, oh, tough. layup. <laughs> Christian Ooh. Ford with has got it going. Caleb, tough pass. Got it inside. And the Warford got the bucket. The big fella. A load to handle down low. Gets it right over the top of Solomon, Solomon right there. Quartang has got it. Got it inside. They're trying to go inside to Solomon Campbell. It'll stay with Edward Waters, though. We've got a three-point game with five minutes remaining. This is crunch time right here. Edward Waters needs these, these precious minutes. Mitchell with it. Mitchell thought about it. Got it inside. That's a travel. And they're going to get a substitution. And into the game is going to come R.J. Nord. No, they, they didn't get the sub in. In time. So R.J. Nord will have to wait. Still a three-point basketball game. to take advantage. 
they wanted to take advantage real quick and get that ball up before that press can get, get started. Corte picks up the foul. Just his first. Normally you wouldn't want to send a team to the line this early with five minutes to play. But Morehouse only shooting 53% from the free throw line so far. Got that one to go. Jaden Gray gets the free throw to go. Nine for 16 from the line is Morehouse right now as Gray gets both. And the Tigers desperately need that. Cuts it to a one point game. And we'll see if they'll stay. It looks like they're going to extend this pressure. Nope, they're going to drop back and stick in that 1-3-1. This Edward is their Ward way to keep. To figure it out. Yeah. They're going to try to keep Norfolk in the basketball game this way. They'll go right inside to Caleb. Campbell's going to go straight at him. And the Norfolk picks up the foul. That's two fouls on him. Solomon Campbell, a really young prospect, not getting a lot of minutes recently, but finding himself extremely useful for the Tigers today. So Campbell will get one more. 28 to 26 is our score. Edward Waters continues to be able to make free throws. That has been the advantage. The Morehouse Tigers have shot more free throws. Edward Waters has made more free throws. As Campbell knocks clutch. them both down. It's very clutch. That was much needed right there for him to knock both of them down. 29-26. Morehouse looking to drive the ball. Got Good it inside. Oh. Beautiful move right there to jam. Second you, Taylor. When you can't get the three to fall, Taylor slams it down. Christian Ford couldn't get that one to go. Taylor has it. Taylor's a good-looking basketball player. Some contact there. No call. They'll get it to Mitchell, and Mitchell ah. tripped over a line on the floor. <laughs> When you're trying to play at this pace for this long, Mitchell has played a ton of minutes. I'm still wondering who fatigues first. This will come down to conditioning. This is an incredible pace. We thought the Clark game was a tremendous pace as well. This is a breakneck pace. Cedric Taylor, three-point goal, and he got that one and yelled at the official. He thought he was fouled. Cedric Taylor's a good-looking basketball player. I mean, he's long, athletic, nice jump shot right there. 31 to 29, our score. Two-point basketball game right here. And Goliath Mitchell oh, with the tough. kiss off the glass. A beautiful move by Mitchell, and he just drops it in. Pressure stays on. Now Morehouse face guarding Taylor, trying to take him away. They'll get a kick out, passes up on the three, takes the contact. Oh, the charge. That is the right call. Christian Ford stood in there and took the contact. That's three on him. Now that is the 10th foul, so we should see now Edward Warner's getting in the into the bonus yes. and being able to shoot. So we're under four. We'll take a media timeout right here. We'll come right back. 31-31 is our score. Morehouse College versus Edward Waters University. We've got a tie basketball game. Three minutes and 34 seconds. We'll be right back. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Hey, what's up?
up, everybody? My name is Amber May, and I'm a voice actor out here in Los Angeles. I'm the voice of Dia in Genshin Impact, Yen Ching in Honkai Star Rail, um, the narrator in Comey Can't Communicate, and I also voice Brooklyn Barbie in the movie Barbie Big City Big Dreams. I'm here to let you know that I'm going to be a guest this year at Urban Nerd Con in Atlanta. Yeah, woo! That's going to be April 26th through the 28th at the... Uh, where, where are we going again? It's going to be at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. So, if you're a guest... We're back here live at Edward Waters University coming out of the media timeout. We've got Morehouse College versus Edward Waters University. we got a tie basketball game, 31 all. Got it to Christian Ford. Ford probing, but Turnover. loses the ball. Couldn't see who tapped it away. That pressure, pull up jump shot. That one is good. good. Beautiful shot right there. Lacewell has been impressive. He's had Six a good point. Yes. 305 remaining on the game clock. Tobert and Mitchell. Ball screen almost ripped away from Mitchell. Mitchell! Oh, no, Goliath Mitchell, tough shot. And we're talking about a kid that did not play basketball last season. Goliath Mitchell is impressive. Three ball. Couldn't get it to go. Cortang with the spin move. Moving it up the floor. Cortang, kick out. Glover! That no three no good. This pace. Woo. Starting to see teams settle in a little bit. 33 all. Oh. Pull up jump shot. Oh. That one is good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Caleb, Caleb from downtown. And he shoots the ball with a side spin and still gets it to go. The lefty. Get a high ball screen here. Tobert and Mitchell. Mitchell got inside, and it'll be a foul. Let's see who they call the foul on. I'm waiting for the signal from the official. That will go yeah, against yeah, 13. That's and three that's on him. Now, every foul from here on out, we're shooting two for both teams. Mitchell gets the first free throw to go. First free throw is good for Mitchell. Mitchell has seven points. Again, Mitchell scores it. Mitchell's, he's starting to heat up. Mitchell's got nine. Him and Christian Ford, nine apiece. After those two free throws. 92% from the line is Ever Waters. Ball goes out of bounds. That pressure causes another turnover. 146 remaining. We got a one point basketball game. Edward Waters down one. And they'll save some clock right here, does Edward Waters. Madre, would you say would you say it's safe to say Morehouse has turned it over ten times at least? We'll check the numbers. I believe so. They had nine turnovers at the five minute mark. Tolbert spinning. Christian Ford with the tip in. Christian Ford punishing Morehouse. He's got 11. Pull up jump shot. That is a oh, pretty shot. Pretty. That is a pretty shot right there by Lacewell. Lacewell. That's, that's nice. Good basketball player. Morehouse has 13 turnovers officially in the first half so far. Cortang, pull up jump shot. Might not be the one they want. Bodies are hitting the floor. And Christian Ford's going to get tagged for a foul on B.J. Mitchell right there. Boy, what I think. Physical game here. Physical game. The turnover margin is 13 to 10. So 13 turnovers for Morehouse. And 10 turnovers for Edward Waters. We got bench points. Morehouse leading on bench it points. They've got 19 the points off the bench to just nine points off the bench for Edward Waters. 
Points off turnovers, almost identical as Mitchell. Got the free throw to go. Foul count almost even, 14 to 12 between these two teams. The difference in the game has been the free throw line. Yes, it has. He misses that one. Tigers rolls from the free throw line continue. Now we're going to get we got a timeout here by Edward Waters. We got a timeout on the floor. We got a two point game. 39 to 37. Morehouse leading Edward Waters. We'll be right back after the break. We are back here, Edward Waters versus Morehouse College. We've got a two-point basketball game. Under 50 seconds remaining, Goliath Mitchell. Oh, three ball! Goliath Mitchell. A huge three. Contested. And we've got a one-point lead and a steal. Cortang on the run. Oh, on the line. They'll say he stepped out. What a big shot, a big play. And almost another turnover. Man, now what a game. Nice. Another timeout. I'm looking to see if this is a full or a 30. We'll get a 30 second timeout. We're gonna stay right here. We're gonna stay right here. We're gonna go over some of the stats here in this basketball game, our score. Morehouse 39, Edward Waters 40. We got a one point lead in this basketball game. And I tell you, David, it's come down to the free throw line. It comes Morehouse down. 11 for 19. They're shooting 57% from the free throw line. This is Edward Waters 13 for 14 from the line. They're shooting 92.9%, almost 93% from the free throw line. That's been the difference in the basketball game. Everything else pretty has even. Pretty even. Now Morehouse leads the rebounding advantage. They've got a 24 to 18 lead uh, on the rebound advantage, especially on the offensive glass. They've got a two point advantage there and a four point advantage on the defensive glass. And, that, and that's pretty much as expected. DJ Mitchell with the basketball. Now we see Edward Waters mixing it up again, going to a two three zone and trapping out of it. I mean, what they do defensively is incredible. Now, game clock down under 20. Shot clock still in play. Shot clock at 10. Almost turned it over right there, did Taylor. Shot clock at five. Takes the three. Oh, and a foul. And he's oh, fouled. Oh, man. Seven seconds remaining, and they'll get Sammy Vassat for the foul. And it is the exact same person who we thought would call the first one. Cabrell Huff livid over there. I mean, he is livid. He, ha he has to pace the sideline before he gets a technical. We saw the replay here inside the uh, arena, and I, I understand why he's upset. You forced Morehouse into a three-point shot under five, and a con deep contested three. That free throw is good. So one for one so far. And Gray will get one more. We got a tie basketball game. We're tied at 40. This is a big free throw for Gray. Yes, it is. Second one's good. Third one's good, excuse me. Five seconds remaining. Pull up jump shot that's blocked by Taylor. 
And that is how the first half will end. 41 to 40 is our score. 41 to 40. Morehouse College leading Edward Waters University. We'll be right back with our second half of play. We're back. It's time for the 2024 Urban NerdCon. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include Underworld creator Kevin Grievous, the Sci-Fi Sisters, and from Spaceballs and Star Trek Voyager, Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. Visit TheUrbanNerdCon.net to get your buy one get one free badges before the price increases. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU Athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do. Brian, AD, Roy, all you guys at BCSN, we really appreciate what it is that you, got, you guys do for us. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. We're back. It's time for the 2024 Urban Nerd Con. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include the Sci Fi Sisters from the Fairly Odd Parents, Gary L. Gray. What up, y'all? It's Gary Gray. Check it out. I need you to do something for me. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for Urban Nerd Con. It's going to be lit. Okay. Our heroes, our villains, everyone's con. See y'all there. Visit TheUrbanNerdCon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. Remember, our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. When it comes to professional learning, teachers deserve better. From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center, an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working. 
<laughs> never not working. Never ever not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield. Never not working. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU athletics. There's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Amber May, and I'm a voice actor out here in Los Angeles. I'm the voice of Dia in Genshin Impact, Yen Ching in Honkai Star Rail, um, the narrator in Comey Can't Communicate, and I also voice Brooklyn Barbie in the movie Barbie Big City Big Dreams. I'm here to let you know that I'm going to be a guest this year at Urban Nerd Con in Atlanta. Yeah, woo! That's going to be April 26th through the 28th at the... Uh, where, where are we going again? It's going to be at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. So, if you're a Genshin Impact fan, a MiHoYo fan, and you live on the East Coast, you got no excuse. Come see me. Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories. Come on down. Let's do it! Let's get it on! Ugh! Voyager, Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. Visit theurbannerdcon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU Athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do. Brian, AD, Roy, all you guys at BCSN, we really appreciate what it is that you guys, you guys do for us. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube Spreaker, or the BCSN app. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports on Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Like a machine. 
we're back. It's time for the 2024 Urban Nerd Con. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include the Sci-Fi Sisters from the Fairly Odd Parents, Gary L. Gray. What up, y'all? It's Gary Gray. Check it out. I need you to do something for me. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for Urban Nerd Con. It's going to be lit. Okay. Our heroes, our villains, everyone's con. See y'all there. Visit theurbannerdcon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. Remember, our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. When it comes to professional learning, teachers deserve better. From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center, an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. Here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working. <laughs> <laughs> never not working. Never ever not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield, never not working. You're looking for the latest information on Southern University Sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU Athletics. There's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Amber May and I'm a voice actor out here in Los Angeles. I'm the voice of Dia in Genshin Impact, Yen Ching in Honkai Star Rail, um, the narrator in Comey Can't Communicate, and I also voice Brooklyn Barbie in the movie Barbie Big City Big Dreams. I'm here to let you know that I'm going to be a guest this year at Urban Nerd Con in Atlanta. Yeah, woo! That's going to be April 26th through the 28th at the... Uh, where, where are we going again? It's going to be at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. So, if you're a Genshin Impact fan, a MiHoYo fan, and you live on the East Coast, you got no excuse. Come see me. Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories. Come on down. Let's do it! Let's get it on! Ugh! Welcome back here at Edward Waters University. We have a fantastic matchup here. We got the Morehouse College Maroon Tigers versus Edward Waters University, and this has been an absolute slugfest. <laughs> 41 to 40 is our score. As both teams get ready to take the court, we're going to go to our keys for the game. Three keys for the game, David, that I've seen. It's been the free throw shooting, Edward Waters making almost 93% from the line, while Morehouse only making 59% of their free throws. They've shot more free throws, but only shot 59% from the line. That's been a major difference in the game. The rebounding edge will go to Morehouse 25 to 19. And the turnover battle, surprisingly, has been about even. Yes. Morehouse turned it over a lot early, and Waters has some issues taking care of the ball late. So our turnover battle, 13 to 11. David, what are your thoughts after you read those numbers? Well, 
Morehouse made the adjustment with that zone, and that caused a couple turnovers with that limp. So that got them back into the game. So now here's one thing when it comes to the turnovers, the forced turnovers. Edward Waters has 10 steals. Morehouse only has four steals. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those Edward Waters turnovers haven't been just complete takeaways. Tried the back door there and, and could not and do it. there's the turnover there. Cedric Edward Taylor Waters with the basketball. Yep. Now DJ Mitchell with it and will bring it across. We'll see. They'll go right inside. And they call the foul on Noir for Wow, that's a big one. That's number three. Now Warford trying to clear some space inside. And he'll pick up the foul. Now we'll see Morehouse kind of extend some pressure. Damian Mitchell. All over Goliath Mitchell. They'll force Cortang to bring it up. Cortang will go up against Gray. Tried to go into Floyd, couldn't get it to him. Mitchell has it, going to work on the baseline. Cortang with it. Cortang gets it inside. Norfolk swallows that up. Cortang with it. Cortang and another foul. And one. And, one. and that's four fouls on Norfolk. Wow. Back to back fouls on Norfolk. He'll have four, and he'll it'll have be to sit. Jeremiah Cortang. Wow. Will go to the line. Now Cortain, six points in the first half. So he'll add to that total. He'll have eight now for the game, and it will give Edward Waters a one-point lead. We'll see if the hot, red-hot free throw shooting for the Tigers continues, and it does as Cortain knocks it down. And here is that pressure. They are coming and all out for the steal. basketball. Amari oh, Floyd with the finish over the top after the steal. That's the first bucket from Amari Floyd. La pass tipped around. Cedric Taylor ends up with it, and they'll get an easy slam as Lance, Nate Lancewell, continues to play very well for Morehouse. Lacewell, Nate Lacewell has made a couple of mid-range jump shots and a couple of putbacks. He's done extremely well. Cortain, wild shot at the basket. No good. Taylor with the basketball. Gets it over to the corner, and they'll back it back out. Taylor wanted it. Won't get it. They'll give it to Mitchell. They'll set up a 1-4 high set. They'll get it inside. That's who you want with the basketball if you're Morehouse. He Lacewell is well again. Lacewell could not get the turning around jump shot to go. Maybe got away with some steps, but they'll throw the basketball away there. Two-point lead for Edward Waters. 18-08 remaining in the second half. As the pace so far, we've only been two minutes into this half. But this pace, nowhere near the pace we saw the first two minutes of the basketball game is that was played at a blur. Now we'll get Cortain bringing the ball up, working against Gray. Morehouse will, will go into a man this time, man to man. Get a stagger screen right there for Christian Ford. Ford will get it to Cortain. They'll continue to work. Goliath Mitchell on Damian Mitchell. Step off three. That one, no good. Tipped around. They'll get it to Damian Mitchell. Mitchell will center it for Morehouse, down two, 45 to 43. Taylor, they'll get it inside. Oh, it's blocked. Blocked away by Floyd. Now Floyd gonna run. Ford gets it to Nord. Nord on the drive, reach in, no call. Goliath Mitchell on the spin. Amari Floyd passed up the three. Travel. Amari Floyd not wanting to take the bell out three there, tried to drive it, but traveled with the basketball. Got to put it down. 
They'll trap Mitchell. Mitchell gets out of the trap, gets it over to Cedric Taylor. Taylor inside the lace well, back to Taylor, and they'll center it at the top with Mitchell. They had a man wide open under the basket. They missed him. Lacewell with the basketball working on Noor. They'll dribble handoff right there. Edward Waters just switching all those handoffs. Now it's Nord on Mitchell. Mitchell finds his way inside. And, out. and Mitchell is fouled. We'll get a sub. Early substitution coming into the game. It looks like Deshaun Edwards will come in for Amari Floyd. Floyd, a little gimpy. Amar Floyd came off a 26-point performance versus Fort Valley, but just hasn't been able to get going since then. Was bobbled up in the Clark Atlanta game and hasn't scored it that well here as Taylor can't get that one to go in for it gets the rebound. Goliath Mitchell with the basketball. And, and we'll foul. get a foul right there. It's going to be on As Amon Decker. Decker. Now this is the dangerous thing. Edward Waters has been able to foul Morehouse successfully because of the free throw shooting woes of Morehouse. Morehouse has to be careful with fouling Edward Waters because they've made their free throws. Nord with the basketball. Nord on the drive. Gets it to Christian Ford. Ford mid-range. Oh, up and got it. Christian Ford, tough shot. Christian Ford has 13 points. Continues his dominance. Decker with the basketball. Decker inside. Got that one to go. They're going to need Amon Decker to pick it up. That's his first bucket in the basketball game. Yes, it is. Two-point basketball game, 47 to 45. Morehouse goes back to a man. R.J. Nord with the pull-up. That one off the front of the rim. Tipped around. Got it to Taylor. Taylor working on Edwards. Now they'll get it to Gray. Decker with the basketball. And he'll go to work against Nord. No, he'll kick it to Taylor. Jump shot there. No good. Taylor's got a good release. Good looking stroke, but just hasn't been able to get it to go. Ball tipped away. Edwards gets it inside. Edwards off the glass. Can't get it to go. Tipped around. Decker with the rebound. He'll outlet to Mitchell. Mitchell on the run. Now the pace picking back up again. Mitchell will slow it down and they'll run a set. Morehouse much more patient trying to run some offense in the second half. That's been, that was the expectation in this game for Morehouse to be patient. Set their, set their offense up and try and, and take advantage of their length, which they just did right there. Now they're working it inside as Decker just gets a duck in. Now he's got four points in the game. Decker needs to get it going, and it looks like he's exactly trying to do that. 47-47. We're at the 15-minute mark. Got away with a foul right there. Lacewell could have gotten hit with his third. They'll kick out to Nord. Shot clock down to 10. Mitchell was going to take that one. Mitchell oh, skies in. Goliath Mitchell for two. Almost thrown away. As that Edward Waters pressure continues, cross court pass to Lacewell. They'll pull it back out. Wisely doing a better job dealing with the pressure. DJ Mitchell for three, rimmed out. RJ Nord on the run. Goliath Mitchell has it. One on two, Goliath and he still gets the win. Goliath Mitchell, a man amongst boys in this second half. He's got six points. Lob inside to Lacewell, no good. Rebound and in by Decker as Decker gets the deuce. R.J. Nord on the run, not wasting any time. Goes right into Taylor. And R.J. Nord with the deuce and will get a timeout on the floor. That timeout going to Morehouse. So when we come back from the timeout, I believe we'll just stay right here. It's a 30-second timeout. We're going to stay right here. 53-49, to 53-49 on score. David, what are you seeing on, in this basketball game? A Morehouse is doing a better job of taking their time and getting those shots that they really want. Before, the earlier in the first half, they seemed to be rushing their shots, and with them rushing their shots, that, that caused Edward Waters to get up and going.
will will be key as we go down the, go down the stretch. Can Morehouse take care of the ball? If they can take care of the ball, you'll be close to being in this game. If not, that will be the key factor for Edward Waters to walk away with victory. We talked about Morehouse's rebounding advantage, that being one of our keys to the game. How do you think that rebounding advantage could play late as we get into the later in rounds in the second half? Well, it could play a good advantage, but now that Nuofar has four fouls, that's going to play just as big as advantage as well because foul trouble is starting to set in for Morehouse. Here we go. Second half underway. Tigers continue that pressure, and Lacewell will be patient. I think that's smart there. Absolutely. Decker wanted it, but that would have been... That would have been a, a, a tough pass to get to him. Morehouse will be patient. We'll run some more offense. We're seeing more offense in the second half. And a foul. In their half court sets as Christian Ford picks up the foul right there. That'll be Christian Ford's third. Now we'll get a timeout here for Edward Waters as Cabrell Huff will take a timeout. I believe we're going to get a full timeout there. Yep, we're going to get a full timeout for Ever Waters. 53 to 49, 53 49 on score. Ever Waters with the lead. We'll be right back after this timeout. Back. It's time for the 2024 Urban NerdCon. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include Underworld creator Kevin Grievous. The Sci-Fi Sisters, and from Spaceballs and Star Trek Voyager, Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. Visit TheUrbanNerdCon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. This is Brian Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBC. You know how? Goliath died. Got 15. City at 6. Goliath died. Goliath died. Goliath died. Goliath died. No, I said he had 6 in the hand. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. We are back here at Edward Waters University. We've got a great contest, 53-49. We've got a four-point basketball game here between Morehouse College, the Maroon Tigers, versus Edward Waters University, the Tigers as well. Decker and Edwards gets tied up and we'll get a jump ball. Decker is just not happy with how he's being officiated today. I mean, he is taking a bruising inside. <laughs> Madre, as we said, this has been a fast and physical game. I just saw something, another change defensively oh, for Edward no Waters. Way. Lacewell. Lacewell has been a huge factor for Morehouse in this basketball game. That's 12 points for Lacewell. Two-point basketball game. Now Morehouse showing some 2-3 zone. Using that lift. We're talking about moves and counter moves. Let's see if Edward Waters can figure this zone out. We got two, I mean, just tremendous coaches in this basketball game. Goliath Mitchell puts oh. the shakes. Oh. And Demetrius Caleb almost shook Caleb out of his shoes on that play. Traditional basketball. And that's a travel. That's a travel. I mean, Goliath and Mitchell just gave Demetrius Caleb a jab step and almost sent him barreling toward the sideline on that one. Four-point basketball game, 55 but to 51. Cabrell Huff, excellent call to break that defense down, that zone defense down in the middle, Madre. That's where you break a zone down. Tigers continue to move it. They'll get Christian Ford. Ford. And they're calling Decker for the foul on Christian Ford. Decker, that is four on Decker. And Decker just cannot, and Doug Whitler is, to say that Whitler, Coach Whitler is unhappy with that call would be a, a tragic understatement. <laughs> Absolutely. He is not pleased. 
Can't say that I blame him right there. So, 55-51, and we'll get three free throws here. They could give the Tigers their largest lead of the basketball game. Christian Ford can't get, get that one to go. That is only the second miss from the line from Edward Waters today. We'll see if the announcer's jinx is on. It is not. <laughs> Christian Ford continues to play yes. extremely well. Third one is good. I've got 21 points for Christian Ford. 57 to 51. Taylor on the run. Taylor! Oh, tough oh, move. Oh, my goodness. Tough move. Thank you, Taylor. That is a good basketball player. Yes, he is. I mean, that's a good look. At, we talk about how much talent we see in this league that looks like Division I talent. Cedric Taylor is one of those guys that could be easily a Division I basketball player. Goliath Mitchell. Oh, oh ball. He's got it. Goliath Mitchell with the wing three. And that gives him 20 points, Andre. Mitchell and Ford, that backcourt, getting it done. But Lacewell hey, continues. Lacewell's playing an excellent game. Seven-point basketball game, largest lead of the game for Edward Waters. And Caleb, now Caleb has been a terrific defender. Oh, Beautiful oh. pass inside, but couldn't convert. There's Edwards, Edwards. And they call a foul. Wow. That one going against Lacewell. Now, he's not in foul trouble. That's his first one. Lacewell. Now, Lacewell, uh, Nate Lacewell has been fantastic yes. in this basketball game. Dangerously I've got him with 14 points. Yeah, dangerously close to a travel before the foul. We've got a timeout on the floor in a five-point basketball game here, 60 to 55, 60 to 55. Edward Waters leading Morehouse House College will be right back with 11:03 of the second half. This is Ryan Fulford. AD Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics, from the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories. We cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. After the timeout, Edward Waters 60, Morehouse College 55. We got a five-point basketball game with 11.03 remaining. I believe it'll be, oh, Deshaun Edwards will be shooting free throws for the Tigers. Edward Waters, as you said earlier, shooting phenomenal from the free throw line. Deshaun Edwards at the line, shooting two and three. And we'll get Edwards first. Edwards knocks down the first. And so. That first free throw by Edwards is good. First free throw for Edwards. We'll see. And the free throw shooting for Edward Waters continues as Edwards gets them both. They have been sizzling from the free throw line. Taken away. R.J. Dorr with the basketball. Got it to Goliath Mitchell. Mitchell on the move. Scoop oh, up. No good. good. On the run, Demetrius Caleb tried to get it to Lacewell. 
Looking for somewhere to go with the basketball. They get it. They'll settle it down. Out there to Jaden Gray. Demetrius Caleb. Three! Oh, Caleb! Caleb did not shoot it well in the first half, but he's got it going right now. And what a game. 62 to 58. Mitchell gets it to Edwards. Edwards fell down. Uh, Looks like a wet man. spot on the floor there. Yeah. Edwards just slipped. Cabrell Huff not happy. He wanted better execution. And we're going to get a substitution. Yeah, we're we're going to get two. Amari Floyd comes into the game. Now, Floyd had an ankle issue early on in the basketball game. We're getting multiple substitutions here. We got into the game. I'll try to get them off for you. We got Amari Floyd coming in. We got Vino Glover coming in and Adonis Tober all coming into the game. So out goes RJ Nord, out goes Christian Ford, and out goes Deshaun Edwards. So Goliath Mitchell and Justin Quartang are the two guys that remain on the floor and the rest were sub. Now we get 2-2-1 pressure for Edward Waters here as they mix up those looks. Got it over. Cedric Taylor. Oh. And Taylor just sold that one. Yes, he did. He sold that call and baited the official right into it. Yes, he and did. And we're going to get a foul going against Goliath Mitchell. No foul trouble for Mitchell. He's got two. He and he's got to travel. <laughs> Good makeup call. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't right call. I'm teasing. 62 to 58, our score. Nine minutes and 47 seconds remaining. Now some trouble getting in. They get it into Cortang. Cortang will go to work here. He gets it to Floyd. Guy moves to Vino Glover. Glover looking inside. They get it to Tober. Tober tries to play bully ball, and but it's blocked. Wow. It's going to be on Lacewell. Lacewell, just his second foul. But it's going to send Tober to the line. And we mentioned how well Edward Waters has shot the ball from the line. They've been awesome from the line. They've only missed two all game. How do you play at this pace and still be over 90% as a team from the free throw line? And that's a testament to whatever they're doing in player development, Madre. We saw that being pretty consistent for the Tigers as Tober gets the free throw to go. And, I mean, they're making them from every position. Four-man, five-man, they're all making yes, free throws. Are. And this is key. This is very key. Tolbert, that free throw no good. Skies for the rebound. They get it. Now they got a lane. Lost the handle. Oh! Blocked away by Tolbert. Tolbert just wiped the glass with that one. Mitchell with the basketball, sizing up. I thought he was going to shoot that one. Now they'll go ball screen with he and Tolbert. Tolbert pops. Turned over. Ends up in the ball. Tolbert. Tolbert. Coach Whitler not happy, and neither is Cedric Taylor, and I don't know that I blame him. Now, they're going to get Sammy Vassar into the game, and they're sending. Now, this is an important thing to note. Goliath Mitchell looked like he may have tweaked something. I'm not sure what it was. I don't know if it was a knee or an ankle or something on that last play. And they need him down the stretch. And they got a substitution. So Sammy Vassat known for his defense, but not his offense. So now they'll need either Tobert or Floyd to really score the ball. Driving. Quarte oh, with the contact. Oh, oh, and roll. Oh, the freshman, oh, Jeremiah Quarte. What a play. Taylor has it. Mitchell 
Tried to speed down the lane, get it out to Taylor. Good looking shot by Taylor, and he's got it. Taylor cool as the other side of the pillow as he knocks that one down. That gives him 10 for the game. Said it many times. Said that Taylor's a good looking ball player. That kid's got the goods. Dino Glover with it off the elevator screen. Morehouse, they're going to stay in their man. They're, they're coming out of that zone. They're going to go straight man. Ten seconds on the clock. Cortez blocked away by Cedric Taylor. And Huff all over Cortez. Cortez. We'll see what the out-of-bounds call is. The bench, the coaching staff, all over Cortez for not making the extra pass <laughs> on that play. Four-point game, 65-61. They've got to go quickly. Floater over the top. Tipped around. And Vasat, the energy bunny, skipped over to Nord. Nord passed up the three. He's going to drive it. Contact. Oh, they go to charge. They call the charge wow. on R.J. Nord. Oh, that's that. Wow. And R.J. Nord has four, four fouls. Four fouls, yes. He'll have to come out of the basketball game. Man, I. Oh, man. I, woo. And R.J. Nord. The Division I transfer from Elon has been largely sidelined in this basketball game with the close of five. Yes. 65 to 61, our score will come back right after this media timeout with 7.53 remaining in the basketball game. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Parents, Gary L. Gray. What up, y'all? It's Gary Gray. Check it out. I need you to do something for me. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for Urban Nerd Con. It's going to be lit. Okay. Our heroes, our villains, everyone's con. See y'all there. Visit theurbannerdcon.net to get. All right. We're back here. We've got a four-point basketball game, 65-61. Morehouse College versus Edward Waters, and Edward Waters making up the zone. We'll try to get some stats out here to you, but these guys have been playing so fast. It's going to be tough to get a read in for you, but we'll do it as soon as we can. Drive by Gray, batted around, no good. Oh, and a foul. And we'll get a foul call. So once I see who the foul call is on, uh, that's going to go against Vino Glover. Vino only has one foul. Okay, so I'll get some numbers for you. We've got a four-point basketball game with 7.38 remaining. This game has been as about as even as you can get. Morehouse, 22 for 47, shooting 46% from the field. Edward Waters, 21 for 51, shooting 41% from the field. So slight edge goes to Morehouse there. Four for 13 from three for Morehouse, shooting 30% from three-point range. Most of that being done by Cedric Taylor for Morehouse. Four for 18 from the three-point line for Amber Waters, not shooting it very well, 22%. The free throw line, 60% for the Morehouse Tigers versus 86% for Amber Waters. Those are some of the stats for the game. We'll Get back to the action. Cross-court pass over to Goliath Mitchell. They'll trap kill. him and take him away. Morehouse can tie the game or go ahead with the three. Demetrius Caleb with the basketball. will size up Vino Glover right here. Got it inside. 
Nate Lacewell has been terrific. Taylor, straight on three, could not get it to go. That would look good. Kick out, Caleb, three ball, no good. Taylor, Taylor runs onto his own guy. He ran into Rowe. I'm sorry, there was Pegues right there. But it will be more house ball. Cedric Taylor will be on the trigger. And we've got a two-point basketball game after the main free throws there. Got it to Lacewell. Lacewell, another one of those kids that easily could be Division One. He's a really good basketball player. Tolbert with the rebound. Lacewell looks like about 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, yes, he does. Maybe got away with sliding his feet right there. Did the sock. Christian Ford up off the bench. Goliath Mitchell three. No oh, good. Oh, Scott. Great rebound. I mean, that energy. Great to the side. Beautiful oh. pass. And Tomer tried to send it home, but he's fouled. With two hands with authority, but it's fouled to go to the line. I wow. thought they were going to get Tober for hanging on the rim right there, but they're going to call a foul. <laughs> <laughs> if he would have if he would have sent that home, you would have seen this place erupt. <laughs> 65 to 63. Six minutes and 25 seconds remaining. Adonis Tolbert has shot the ball well from the free throw line. We'll see if that continues. As Christian Ford comes back into the game. Tolbert got the free throw to go. We mentioned the size advantage for Morehouse. Everett Waters has found a way to counteract that. And Tolbert has been a part of that. Edward Waters still shooting excellent from the free throw line. Lacewell's got it inside and Lacewell's going to be fouled by Tolbert. Tolbert didn't have much of a choice. That's three fouls on Tolbert. On number three, Brent number 12 on Tolbert. Is there a first goal? Six, eight, five. Now foul trouble for each team. RJ Nord has four. Christian Ford has three. Adonis Tolbert now has three. For Morehouse. Omar Rowe has four. New Orford, the seven-footer, has four. And Amon Decker has four. Some key players with foul trouble for the Maroon Tigers. Uh, we got some conversation between the officials. And I think it may be a clock adjustment here. We'll wait and see. I'm showing 617 on the clock. No, they're talking possession arrow. They double check the possession arrow and the possession arrow will remain with Ever Waters. Everything's all good. We'll get our free throws from Lacewell. Second one's good. How big you think Lacewell is, you said? Lacewell is 6'8", 6'9", and he's been big for this game. Put it on the floor, shoots it well. Coach Whitler does such a great job recruiting here at Morehouse. Tremendously talented team. Under his coaching and tutelage, Morehouse the number one team in the entire SIAC. And you mentioned Benedict being ranked in the nation. It was Morehouse knocking off Benedict yes. in their SIC matchup just this past week. Don't be surprised if you see Morehouse creep into that top 25 either in the nation for D2 top 25. Rightly deserved. I mean, they have been absolutely terrific. 9-1 in the SIC. We've got a three-point basketball game here. Shot clock at 10. Amari Floyd had it. He'll kick it to Christian Ford. Ford 
on the run. Taylor wiped it away, and they'll get Taylor with a foul. And Taylor is upset about that one. No foul trouble for Taylor. We'll get Christian Ford going to the line here. Three-point basketball game. Tigers finding a way. There's Christian Ford. Knocks it down. Edward Waters continues the hot shooting from the line. And so. Ah, second one's no good. Could not get that to go. That is just the third miss from the line right there. Yes, it was. From Edward Waters all night long. Four-point game. 68 to 64. Amari Floyd really challenging great. Madre, every point counts going down the line now. Oh, great defense. Floyd got the block. Christian Ford tried to thread the needle and get it back to Amari Floyd. Taylor thought about the three. And, and, and that's on Tolbert. Oh, that's big. Oh, that's on Tolbert. That's four. Now we got a substitution as Cortang. You got to get Tolbert to give him a break for at least two, three minutes. Tolbert had no choice right there. Yeah. You got to defend the rim. Gray gets that free throw to go. My points, my point total, and what they have for Crystal Ford is way off. Both free throws are good. As Jaden Gray was able to get them both. Oh, there's a turnover. Sloppy pass right there. Taylor! And a charge! Cedric Taylor, that's four fouls on Taylor. After I just said he wasn't going to be in foul trouble, <laughs> Taylor picks up back-to-back -back oh, fouls. And not, oh, they chased it to a block. They chased it. Oh, they chased it. No. Oh, no. No way. Coach Cabralhoff erupts. They are changing oh, that God. to a blocking they foul. They changed it. That is it. unbelievable. That was a charge call, and they changed it to a block. Wow. Clearly, the official on the baseline signal charge. Oh, wow. Crucial call there. The fans are livid. Coach Huff is livid. But if they have to discuss this one, hopefully they get this right. Man, at a critical point in the game, you called a charge. Wow! And you send Christian Ford to the bench with his fourth foul. Oh, man. Let me take that off of Taylor. Man, Christian Ford. Oh. Foul Wow. I mean, that is a back-breaking call. You call the block and, and run in and change it. it. That, <laughs> I mean, you call it a charge and run in and change it to a block. Wow. Oh, wow. That... And now we're seeing an official, like there's some confusion going on. They're going back to the table. I mean, I'm not sure what the confusion is outside of the fact that you changed the charge to a ball. Oh, my goodness. Now, wow. Taylor had the wild opportunity oh. to tie the game. Man, they'll be talking about that one, especially if that's a difference maker. Oh! 
Bad Spiders Hall. Now Morehouse not happy about that one. They thought it went off on Mar Floyd's foot. We've got a one point game. Wow. Now into the game, here's something to watch. We've got a young player in the game here as Nebi Tesfa enters the basketball game. Very limited minutes, but because of foul trouble, he's gonna have to play. Got a kick out, Vino Glover thought about the three, now takes the three off the front of the rim, no good. Here comes Demetrius Caleb on the run. Oh, Caleb, ball taken away, bodies on the floor. Scramble, no call! And it stays with Morehouse. If swallow wow. your whistle was a person, <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. That is why we call this the black and blue division of the SIAC. They are letting them play definitely. I mean, there was more contact on that possession than there was in the Buffalo, Kansas City game last night. And no whistle. And I don't care who you call it on, but there was enough contact to blow. Lacewell. I mean, that's a really good basketball player right yes, there, he David. Is. 69 to 68. And the Morehouse faithful are trying to tear their team on to victory. Corte drives it. So oh! contact, no foul. The freshman, Jeremiah Corte. Corte comes up. Big. Edward Waters up 170 to 69 with 412. What a game. We'll be right back after the break. We've got four minutes and 12 seconds left in this one. Don't you go away. When it comes to professional learning, teachers deserve better. From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center, an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. Welcome back, everybody, and I mean, listen, this is a all-out slugfest. David, Morehouse College versus Everett Waters. Could we see any more ups and downs in this basketball game than we've seen today? Andre, this is a Baltimore Ravens, Pittsburgh Steelers slugfest, complete slugfest, and I love every minute of it, and we got four more minutes to enjoy this. Shot for shot, we've got a one-point game. Cedric Taylor with the basketball for Morehouse. He's going to bring it up. Taylor straight to the rim. And Taylor's going to be fouled by Deshaun Edwards. And if you ask who's in foul trouble, everybody. Foul shot by Taylor is good. Taylor gets the second free throw. One point basketball game now going Morehouse's way. And here comes that 1-3-1 for one from Morehouse with Cedric Taylor at the top. Kick over. Goliath Mitchell blocked by Taylor. I mean, oh, Taylor. And they got with a walk. Oh. Some steps should have been called right wow. there. Wow. This is a no-call game. This is backyard 
driveway basketball from an officiating <laughs> standpoint. Now we're under four, so we'll get a timeout right here under four. Even the referee, I mean, even, uh, Edward Waters' coaching staff is living. Three minutes and 46 seconds. We got a one-point game. We'll come right back here after a quick break. Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working. <laughs> never not working. Never ever not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield. Never not working. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. And here we go, right back with your action. It'll be Cedric Taylor inbounding the basketball for Morehouse College with a one-point lead. Currently leading Edward Waters. Three ball. Oh, Demetrius Caleb with the three. three. That one is a dagger. Knocks down the three, smiles and licks his tongue out at the crowd. Four-point basketball game. Got it inside. Amari Floyd with the jam. Great pass. Back to the pressure. Cortang is going to be an all-league player. He is just a freshman. That kid is going to be incredible. Taylor working on Glover. Morehouse is going to work the clock. Almost tick it away. And I think Vino Glover, he's got an injury. Corte had to let him go. Pugis gets the score inside. And maybe the sub. Vino Glover is hobbled. And we've got a foul against Caleb. But now we got some guys that want to be tough. That was just a regular foul. I think guys got tangled up. I don't think there was any intention in that. And we've got a four-point game. we got two subs coming in. Edward Waters desperately needing Christian Ford back into this basketball game. As both coaches are going to calm their players down immediately. Now, look, this is why both of these teams are so good. Veteran coaches immediately calming their team down, settling everything down, and getting these guys focused on the basketball game that is to be played. The referee is trying to get control back of this game. They're discussing what should be done. Now there's been a lot of chirping going on back and forth. If anything, worst case scenario, it would be a double technical. If there are any calls. To me, I think Demetrius Caleb sold that one a little bit. I, you know, maybe I've got a bad angle because those guys' backs are turned to me yeah. from, from here from the table. But it didn't look like anything intentional. It looked like two guys that may have gotten tangled up a little bit. We'll see what the referees come up with. It, what you typically look for in this situation is did Jeremiah Cortang extend his arms out? Because that would signal that he pushed Demetrius Caleb down to the floor. Yeah. I didn't see him extend his arms out to push Caleb down. We'll see what they say here. They're taking their time to come up with something. To me, this is a no call. We play on here, but the official's still talking it over. Two minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the basketball game. Morehouse College leading Edward Waters. Morehouse shooting 45.5% from the floor. Edward Waters, 41% from the floor. 
Morehouse doing a little bit better job shooting the basketball from deep. Five for 17 from three. And what Waters four for 21. Just 19% for the home team Tigers. 84% from the free throw line for Edward Waters. 65% from the free throw line for Morehouse. Morehouse has a rebounding advantage of 11, 41 to 30 is the rebound advantage for Morehouse. We've had nine ties, 12 lead changes in this basketball game. Believe it or not, Everett Waters has had the lead for 22 minutes in this game. They held the lead until you got a critical call by the official when they step in with at the five minute mark and they change what was called originally as a charging foul and they change it to a block against Christian Ford and you send one of the leading scorers for Edward Waters to the bench with four fouls on the charge. Largest lead for Edward Waters has been seven. Largest lead for Morehouse has been five. Right now, we've got a four-point game. Turnover ratio basically tied. 18 to 17. Morehouse was able to get a handle on those turnovers. Had 13 turnovers in the first half. Only five turnovers in the entire second half. Points in the paint, virtually even. They've had the exact same numbers of possessions. And the foul count is a four different. You've had four more fouls called on Ever Waters than you have for Morehouse in this basketball game. That is every meaningful stat that I could possibly find for the game so far. This has been about as even of a basketball game between two teams as you can get. The difference maker in this game at times has been the, the guys in stripes. What, what are they discussing? Well, we're almost in a five to six minute intermission and they're still trying to figure out what they're going to call. I can tell you from the looks of it, it looks like this is gonna go against Edward Waters. Coach Cabral Hub is not happy right now. But it doesn't look like Coach Whitler is either. So I guess this is official, you've done your job. If neither coach is happy, you've probably done the right thing. <laughs> Probably. Hopefully we can get one of the referees to come over here and explain what it is. So 76 to 72. David, if you're in the Edward Waters huddle, what are you telling your team right now? We gotta go back to that pressure in this last two minutes of 46 seconds and get another turnover. They need a turnover big. They need a basket and a turnover. They've got two minutes and 46 seconds to try to get it done. Wow, I... we got some fouls that are gonna come into play here. David, do you think we've seen the end of the big fella, the seven footer, the Wafa for Morehouse? He's got four fouls. Do you think he sees any more time in this basketball game in the last 245? I don't think we see them again, just for the simple fact they're going to need another ball handler to handle that pressure. And he's not a ball handler. I mean, yes, they what they may do is they may go, they may go, uh, you know, one in, one out. So we're going to get an official here for an explanation on the call. Give us just one second. Yeah. Yeah, it's so important that we get this right. If y'all can replay it, if we can go back, I'd love to take a look at it. We 
got him trying to pull it up. Which, which play are we looking for? The first foul and then everything. If we can go back to 246, go back to, hey, go back to 250. I'll take 250. Are we trying to see if there's a push? Well, there's definitely a push. We won't What's up, everybody? My name is Amber May, and I'm a voice actor out here in Los Angeles. I'm the voice of Dia in Genshin Impact, Yen Ching in Honkai Star Rail, um, the narrator in Comey Can't Communicate, and I also voice Brooklyn Barbie in the movie Barbie Big City Big Dreams. I'm here to let you know that I'm going to be a guest this year at Urban Nerd Con in Atlanta. Yeah, woo! That's going to be April 26th through the 28th at the... Uh, where, where are we going again? It's going to be at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. So, if you're a Genshin Impact fan, a MiHoYo fan, and you live on the East Coast, you got no excuse. Come see me. Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories. Come on down. Let's do it! Let's get it on! Ugh! in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include Underworld creator Kevin Grievous, the Sci-Fi Sisters, and from Spaceballs and Star Trek Voyager, Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories... Everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. Visit TheUrbanNerdCon.net to get your buy one get one free badges before the price increases. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU Athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do. Brian, AD, Roy, all you guys at BCSN, we really appreciate what it is that you guys, you guys do for us. We are back here. So we've got a foul on a foul on Taylor, and then a double technical. If I'm not mistaken, will go against Cortang and Caleb. So Demetrius Taylor will get a technical foul, and Cortang will get a technical foul. Those will offset, and Cortang will get two free throws. And there we have it, our score. We've got a three-point basketball game. I'm sorry, a two-point basketball game, 76 to 74, and we've got two minutes and 39 seconds remaining. Edward Waters still trying to show pressure out of the half court. 
Morehouse going to try to run some clock. They're looking inside, want to get it to Decker. Trying to work Decker against Floyd. Seven seconds. Taylor. I mean, Cedric Taylor. I mean, that kid is a player. Christian Ford with the basketball down four. Two minutes left. Foul trouble has taken one of the better players for the Tigers out of the game. R.J. Nord. We got a jump ball. The possession will stay with Edward Waters. They'll keep the ball as Cortang and Decker was tied up. Decker tried to give Cortang a little something extra. We got a four-point game. Gets it inbound to Tolbert. Tolbert. Going inside, lift up, no good. Floyd, huge rebound by Amari Floyd. Kick out to Mitchell. Mitchell. Christian Ford, oh. three, and he nails it. Christian Ford, clutch three-pointer to cut the lead to one. Wow, right down the middle, Christian Ford. We've got a one-point basketball game, 78 to 77, the last 90 seconds of this contest. Got it inside, and Ford, it'll be out of bounds. More house basketball. 13 seconds on the shot clock left. What a shot by Christian Ford. Oh, Got it inside oh. to Dick, and Ford blocked it. Christian Ford blocked it. They'll get it to Goliath Mitchell. Now, it'll be Edward Waters basketball. We've got a one-point game. What a game, folks. There are 74 seconds remaining in this basketball game. Cortang will get it in. Morehouse looks like they're switching their defense again. So Morehouse showing some pressure. They'll go man. Quartang with the basketball, gets it to Floyd. Floyd thought about the three, he gets it to Ford. Back to Floyd. Mitchell on the drop. Mitchell pull up off the glass. No good, rebound by Gray. Game clock down to 51. Shot clock at 23. Morehouse is gonna take their time the and milk point the clock. They will not be able to take the final shot. This is gonna be important. And the Waters are going to have to rebound. Can't give up a second chance opportunity right here. They got it inside the Decker. Decker blocked away. Three seconds left on the shot clock. Morehouse College will have three seconds to get a shot off. It is 28.6 remaining on the game clock. Morehouse will take a timeout to think about it. We'll come right back. Edward Waters will have to defend underneath the Mona House basket. We'll come right back after this break. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. We're back. Here we go, we are back. We've got three seconds on the shot clock. Morehouse College will inbound. Gotta expect they're gonna try to get something inside. I mean, they're gonna try to get position. They get a three, corner three, off the glass, no good. Amari Floyd with the rebound. Oh, and he's fouled. Wow. He is fouled. Foul. Amari oh, Floyd wow. will shoot free throws. One. IQ, why would you foul 70 feet away from the bucket? J. 
just reminds you that they're still coaching kids. One point basketball game, 78-77, 23.3, and the crowd gets quiet when this Amari Floyd free throw, and Amari Floyd ties the basketball game. Ties the game. Madre, we'll this see. has been a game, back and forth, all game. We'll see if Edward Waters comes with some pressure and what they dial up. Now remember, Edward Waters cannot foul either. They've got a one point lead. 23.3 seconds remaining. A one point lead for the Edward Waters Tigers. That timeout taken by Edward Waters, it's a full timeout, so we're gonna go to another break. A full timeout by Edward Waters, up one. We'll be right back for the last 23 seconds right after this. It's time for the 2024 Urban NerdCon. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include the Sci-Fi Sisters. From the Fairly Odd Parents, Gary L. Gray. What up, y'all? It's Gary Gray. Check it out. I need you to do something for me. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for Urban Nerd Con. It's going to be lit. Okay. Our heroes, our villains, everyone's con. See y'all there. Visit TheUrbanNerdCon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. Remember, our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. Here we go. We're back for the final 23 seconds of this basketball game. No shot clock. Morehouse will inbound from the far sideline, and they will, I'm sorry, the far baseline, and they will have to go the length of the floor. 23.3 remaining. A one-point lead for Edward Waters, and if they get this win at home, this place is ready to explode. We'll see. Morehouse will need to get the ball in the hands to... Taylor or Lacewell? Well, Lacewell's not on the floor, so we'll see who gets it. We got some 2 3 zones. Shot clock off, down to 10. Gray takes the three off the side of the backboard. Corte saves it. Christian oh, Ford has got it. Amari Floyd, and it's over. It's over. Edward Water. Water is set. The number one team in the SAC East goes down in Jacksonville. What a victory. What a game. To 78. Wow. The number one team in the conference goes down to the Edward Waters Tigers. This place is rocking. This is the Huff Effect. This is why you hire him and bring him to Jacksonville to get you a win like this. It has been an absolute pleasure broadcasting this game for you. Thank you for staying with us here on the BCSN Network. Good night, 79 Warriors, 78 Morehouse.